In this quick chips example, we're going to do some dynamic facing. We're going to start from a blank document, and we're going to go to our wireframe, and we're going to do a simple rectangle. It's going to be 4 by 4, anchored to the center, and we're going to select the center of the document. At this point, it's light blue, which means I can still edit it. Once I confirm it, it turns a dark blue, and it is no longer an editable entity. Now, we're going to select a machine. It's going to be a milling machine, and I'm going to use the default in this example. From here, we're going to do a toolpath. We're going to use a facing toolpath. Right now, I can see the facing, but if I wasn't able to see it, I could pull down this arrow here and see the entire gallery of 2D toolpaths. We're going to select facing. The new chaining manager comes up. We're going to have a video just discussing this because there's a lot of new enhancements here. I'm going to select my chain. And I'm going to confirm the chain is good. From here, I'm going to select a tool. I'm going to select it from the library. And a 2-inch face mill will work. I'm going to change the tool number to 1 because I have a face mill in my slot number 1 on my machine. For a comment, we're just going to say face. Under cut parameters, I have a number of choices here. I'm going to arrow down so we can see them all. And we have dynamic or one pass, one way, or zigzag. Right now we're going to choose dynamic. We're going to leave the defaults right as they are at the moment to see what we get. And we're going to come down here and say our material to leave is zero because we want it to be face to finish. Under our linking parameters, we're going to say our top of stock is 50 thousandths. And our depth is going to be zero because we're going to we're going to go down to the face of the part in this particular case, and we're going to leave the rest of the faults as is. Now we have a facing toolpath. Let's do a quick back plot here, and we're going to do a quick facing. See, we get a nice smooth transition into the material here. With dynamic facing, it's a lot easier on the inserts because we're not jamming them into the block all at one time. We're gradually working our way in. Once our back plot's complete, we're going to generate some code. And I'm going to accept the defaults here. And code expert will come up. In Code Extra, we can do a lot of editing to our uh, G-code if necessary, or we can just run it as is. In this case here, we're just going to take a quick look at it. And here's our G-code. You have our notes, our date and time. That If I wanted to do something like remove line numbers, maybe I don't like the line numbers here, or I need more room in my program, if I have an older machine maybe, I'm going to say remove number blocks, and this will make our program smaller size. And that is a quick chips example of dynamic facing.